Inner Mongolia is one of China's largest and driest regions. It's never had much water, but global warming is now pushing the land and its people over the edge. I've come here to see how the Chinese are coping with these dramatic environmental changes. My first stop is a farming village, about half an hour's drive from the town of Qingshuihei. Villagers here say that their communal waterhole started drying up around 10 years ago. Since then, getting enough water to live has been a constant struggle. Not surprisingly, the shortage of water led to conflict. This 79-year-old says he fought a man who tried to jump his turn in the queue at the waterhole. There's now fierce competition for what's become the village's most valuable commodity. One man has struck the local equivalent of gold. Wano Tang is a farmer who's discovered a new water source and keeps it locked up. <laughs> <laughs> One shares his newly discovered waterhole with just three other families in the village. One thinks this hole he dug tapped into a rare source of underground water. For all his excitement, though, there's not much inside. So how much water is in there now? But every drop is precious. Wan says he tries to share his water with others when he can, but this isn't always possible. To avert catastrophe here, the local government has supplied people with building materials to make their own rainwater wells. For now, the villagers are getting by. With a rainwater hole and his personal underground water supply, life is definitely better for Wan Er Tang than it was before. Still, he's rationed to just five buckets of water a day for his family and numerous animals. And he knows he can never take the water for granted. Uh, 
由于全球的气候变化，气温在气温在变暖，这个干旱嘛，那就是这个使得就是这个全球嘛，呃，都发生干旱，是内蒙古那么也一样。The deputy director of Inner Mongolia's Grasslands Institute, Zhu Shu, says over-farming also plays its part. The land is becoming increasingly fragile. Inner Mongolia's grasslands have some fertile or fertilized land, because of the use of unfair land. So the production is reduced, the animal life is very weak, and it is not suitable for agriculture. People are now being forced to abandon the countryside altogether. I'm heading to a remote village, about half an hour's drive from the first village I visited. It's called Tiger Gap and is only accessible by foot. I find a village but no people. All the houses are deserted. Eventually, I discover an elderly man, his wife, and their visiting grandson. Wang Fu and Zhang Jishang are in their late 60s. They say most people left because it's too hard to find water. The old couple rely on a crude rainwater hole. They have enough water to survive, but little else. When there's not enough rain, their grandson helps them collect water from another spot, two kilometres away. It's a long and difficult walk. And even this supply of underground water is running out. The government believes this way of life is unsustainable. So it built a new village closer to town and offered subsidised housing to those who agreed to move down there. <laughs> This move from remote villages into town is being made by hundreds of thousands of people as part of a massive government program. It's called ecological migration. Professor Yong Shipeng, an ecologist from the University of Inner Mongolia, says this migration is necessary.
This village, on the outskirts of Ching Shui He, is where most of the people from Tiger Gap now live. It's one of many purpose-built ecological migration villages. Living here is a mixed blessing. This man used to have his own farm in the old village. Now he must rent land to do his farming. The people here have houses provided by the government and running water for the first time. But without land, many of these former farmers are struggling for a livelihood. Some of the older inhabitants admire the elderly couple who stayed put in Tiger Gap. Ban Gao also used to be a farmer. His village was abandoned two years ago. As a single father supporting two children, he's had no choice but to find new work. He's just scored a job working at a nearby factory. Starting at 7 in the morning every day of the week, he earns around $1.50 a day. It's barely enough to support his family. Occasionally, Bangal returns to his old farm. In order to receive government compensation for giving up his land, he must plant trees here. It's an attempt to restore the dry and degraded land. While over farming and global warming are forcing a new way of life upon many, this is also being seen as an opportunity by some entrepreneurs. Hoji Shui is the manager of a new tourist enterprise, set up in an abandoned village. Backed by a businessman from Beijing, he's redeveloping it for the tourists. As well as restoring the old village, Hoji Shui is helping other villagers to do up their homes in the traditional style, a display for passing tourists. <laughs> Private enterprise has also managed what government couldn't, supplying the villagers with running water. Hoji Shui believes that visits to these remote rural villages are the perfect antidote to the rapid development seen in the rest of China.
The tourists seem impressed. This type of feature is not found in most cities. It's 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 not found in most most experts agree that this land can no longer support humans the way it used to, and migration is the only answer. But this old couple isn't going anywhere.